Okay, so last time we left off and we discovered a whole blossoming lesbian romance um, going on. Finished snooping and apparently they're like, okay, guess I can go home now. Yeah, right. I'm sure something happened. Something's gonna happen next. Unless the game really is just over, then this would be the shortest video of all time. But she mentioned the elevator sounding broken. And so... I'm worried something's around the corner. <laughs> there is! Look, it's blood! I knew it! Who is it though? Can we guess who's dead? My guess? Hmm. Is it Bernard? No. Who is that? Is it Hector? No. leaves it on display like that, like a crazy person. Like, hide the body. Mr. Cruz? I knew it! Mr. Cruz, it's Hector! Mr. Cruz. Dude, you can't put your fingers on the crime scene. Oh, God. Oh, God. What happened? I kind of want the paper Is in his hand. Is this about <gasps> Paul? Does that mean? Dear Mr. Cruz, thank you for reporting that guest's unacceptable behavior. We will look into it as soon as possible. However, I regret to inform you that we cannot divulge a guest's personal information regardless of that guest's behavior. As I am sure you will understand, we are very concerned with our guest privacy and our staff prides itself on its discretion. Please contact us should that guest bother you again. Yours sincerely. Oh, Bernard the Duke. Oh, I could have. Okay, it's fine. I shouldn't touch anything else. Just stop for a second, Sophie. Is there anything you missed? Is there anything I missed? No, why are we touching things, Sophie? Mr. Cruz's life insurance oh. policy. Why did he have this on him? Marcella? Okay, let's not jump to conclusions. Wait, what happened? I zoomed in too fast. Oh, there we go. Life insurance policy. Insured Hector Cruz, beneficiary Marcella, date of commencement, 6th, February 6th, 1958, date of expiry, February 6th, 1978, coverage amount $10,000, monthly premium. What does that mean? Ah, man, I'm not adult enough to know this money. This is what this means. I know that he's insured and the beneficiary is Marcella. So why'd she say don't jump to conclusions? Like, are we trying to make it so that it's like, or like, are we not supposed to jump to conclusions that it was Marcella that did it? I had a feeling we were gonna find Hector being the one being dead, but who knows who murdered him? And I can throw the stuff away. I'm not gonna do that. Hello, we need the evidence. What do we do? Okay, wait, I... Oh my god. Okay, it's getting a little spooky. We're just gonna follow the footprints. Okay, looks like there was a fight. over here what's this okay cigarettes These broken like pearls Marcella's pearls what happened here but no one who's in their right mind would just leave a dead body that they murdered right 
there in the elevator. So this person has to have a little... Do you think it's Mr. Spade? Okay, let's not pick that up. Poor Paul. Lindsay's death really hit him hard. He hasn't been in the best headspace. Montreal is much bigger than I had expected. Big cities always make me feel lonely, and that feeling was only exacerbated this morning by the fact that everyone around me was speaking a language I could not understand. I bought an English-French dictionary at the train station, but I don't think I'll, re I'll need it after all. English speakers seem more common in the downtown area, thank God. The hotel is nice. When I arrived, the whole staff was busy getting ready for some big event. It wasn't until I saw Marcella enter the lobby with a flower bouquet that I realized today's Valentine's Day. Hector and her were gone in a flash, and I was left feeling more alone than ever, wishing Lindsay was here with me. Helping Marcella out these past few weeks has been a great distraction, but it still hurts so much every time I think about him. I had hoped the pain would be gone, would have gone by now. I'll probably need a double dose of Miltone to sleep tonight. So Paul just needed to pass the time while Marcella was away. That's why he was observing us. Today I wanted to follow Marcella and Hector out of the hotel, but the sidewalks were so packed with people that I started having a panic attack. I tried taking a cab, and that's when I realized I was all out of money. It's been a while since Marcella's last payment, and the hotel was more expensive than I had anticipated. I couldn't resort to selling the camera, so I decided to pawn my victory medal instead. It was hard letting it go after so many years, and yet it also felt strangely liberating. Maybe it's a sign that I shouldn't be holding on to the past so much. To fight boredom until Marcella and Hector's return, I started looking at the hotel staff. I heard Andrew and Beth at the reception desk discussing books and movies. They both seem like nice people. I wish I had found the courage to join their conversation. When you look at people all day and they never look back, you start feeling invisible. I noticed that Sophie, the maid in charge of cleaning the fifth floor, seems to share my interest for other people's lives. Maybe I should try talking to her. Oh, I thought he was about to say something bad about us. Paul was hiding out right here. Did he ever find the person who was sneaking out at night? Who's sneaking out of their room every night? The question has been driving me crazy since my first night at the hotel, so I, tonight I decided to investigate. I found a hiding spot near the ice machine with a nice view of the whole corridor. My camera's at the ready, but there's been no movement for at least three hours, and I'm fighting not to fall asleep. No need for Miltone tonight. I thought being a detective would be more exciting. Maybe Marcella's right. Maybe it's time I let go of Mr. Spade. I'm forgetting his real name. 9.45? So, Anne and Marcella met here this morning while I was busy cleaning room 504. I awoke around 9.30 a.m. and realized I had fallen asleep sometime in the early morning. I was about to go back to my room when the guest from 507 came to sit on one of the chairs close by. She's been there ever since and I don't dare leave my hiding spot in front of her. Marcella joined the guest from 507 around 9.45. Apparently, she told Hexer Hector she didn't love him anymore, and he's now convinced she's been cheating on him. That explains why he assaulted me out of the blue yesterday evening and accused me of having an affair with his wife. The guest from 507, I've learned her name is Anne, has just said she might have an idea on how to solve their problem. I'm thinking of revealing myself, but I don't want to anger Marcella. The longer I wait, the more awkward it will be when I do come out. Maybe I should... And then it just stops. Oh, so Paul's work with Marcella was to follow her around like a private investigator, to help her with research for her novel. Dear Paul, I am sorry to hear you are in such a dire situation. You seem to possess a lot of useful skills, and it's a shame employers cannot see past your medical history. But don't despair. I've been writing novels for almost eight years now. My publishers take most of my sales revenue, but I'm still able to collect a substantial sum of money over the years. Now, I would like to use that money to hire you. I'm getting tired of romance novels, and I'm thinking of breaking out, breaking, branching out into crime fiction as a sort of research. I would like you to follow me around town and take notes of my comings and goings. I'm aware this is a very unusual job, but considering you are able to track me down, I believe you would make a great private detective. In addition to your salary, I would cover all work-related expenses, and you would of course be the first to read the manuscript once it's finished. Sincerely, M. Paul really got into his role. Dear Paul, I hope spying on me isn't too exhausting. You've really inspired me so far, and I already have tons of ideas. The trench coats you bought were a nice touch. You look straight out of a film noir. I also noticed you started smoking. It's probably another way for you to get into character, but maybe that's pushing it a little too far. You know, best of course, but don't pick up drinking next. At this rate, I should be able to start writing in two or three weeks. Thanks again for your help, M. 
you followed Marcella to Montreal even though she was done with her research. Paul, why did you follow me to Montreal? As I already told you, I do not require your services anymore. I'm starting to worry you are taking your role a bit too seriously. You are not a real detective. You have to let go. Oh. I don't want to pick this up unless this will help me open. Can I open this? I have to get the power back on. Oh, we have to get the power back on. How do you do that? I knew something was coming. Didn't think it would be a murder. It's too big. I guess I'll need something pointier. Okay, so I guess I do need that screwdriver. Oh, I don't want to put my hands on anything near that bloody crime scene. Okay, I'll put it back. Well, I don't know if I should put it back because... Should I put it back? Let me place it down. I don't know if I should put it back once I'm done because my fingerprints are all over it. You're telling me no one on this floor has noticed? Ooh, is this a puzzle? Mm, it's too big. I guess I'll need something that worked, thank God. Now, to get the power back. Remove the blown fuses? Eugene, what I would give to have you with me right now. <sighs> Your note will have to make do. If there's a power outage and I'm busy preventing another part of this hotel from collapsing, here's what to do. Check fuse box plan for required amperage of each socket. Remove all blown fuses from sockets. Blown fuses are typically blackened. Screw in new fuses in sockets. Make sure the amperage is correct. Flick big lever to restore power. Okay. How did this end up here? Nothing here. I don't know what this creamy stuff is. Okay, remove blown fuses. How do you check the amberage? Yes, this is what I need. How do I know which one is which? Oh, 15. Amp, 30, 20. How do we know which one is which? Oh, 15 is type A. So we'll place type A there. This is type 30. Is there another one that's type 30? Type G, so type G goes here. And then I guess type S goes here. How does Eugene do this again? Fuses. I probably need new fuses. Where's the... Where's another fuse? I don't think there's anything Oops. here that would help me. Where's the third fuse? Did someone steal it? What do we do? Getting the fuse box open was half the battle. Now I need to take a look inside and fix what needs fixing. Is that a fuse? No. That's the yo-yo. Why would they only give two fuses and then hide the last one? Like, where would the last one be? It was sliding right in front of my eyes. I literally was looking everywhere for it, and I had to look it up. Okay. 
So we'll place Fuse S. Okay, we did it. Power's back. Now I should go down to the lobby. Call the police. Yeah, we gotta go. Why do I have so many things in my inventory? Oh my goodness. Is there anything I've forgotten? Once I leave this floor, I probably won't be able to come back. I don't know. We should probably take the keys. Okay, we can't. Great. I was gonna say, we should probably put the key back. I realized while editing last video that the thing on the door handle literally said, do not disturb, and I went in and I cleaned everything, and so we might get in trouble for that. Okay, we're leaving. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, we're probably going to get so in trouble for this. Why does the lobby seem off? God. Montreal Police Service, Station 22. There's a... There's a man dead. He's been murdered. I... I need the police. Please stay calm, ma'am. Where are you right now? At the lobby. But... The body, it's, it's upstairs. Can you give me the address, please? Oh, um, 11, 1178 Drummond Street. All right, ma'am. Officers are on their way. <sighs> Thank you. Yeah, but where is everyone? brochure Beth was talking about? The one that came in the mail for Anne? I think it is. So Anne and Marcella really are planning to run off together. Was what happened to Hector part of their plan? Oh god. Why does the VIP want to meet with Paul? Maybe he fell for his role playing and wants to hire him as a private investigator. To all reception staff, discard previous instructions. Our prestigious guest has expressed the desire to meet the guests from, five, from room 505. I cannot fathom what such an illustrious man wants from some freak, but if you see him, please direct him towards my office. Thank you, Bernard Ledoux. Bernard so disrespectful. really wants Paul out of the hotel. I have heard more reports of the guests from room 505 and his strange behavior, following people around, spying on guests, etc. As you are all aware, we have a very prestigious guest in room 602, and I would hate for his stay at our distinguished establishment to be tarnished because of some other undesirable guests. Inform the guest in 505 that he must vacate his room as soon as possible, and invent an excuse if you have to. Also note that from now on, our if you can pay, you can stay policy no longer applies. Guests who do not fit the hotel's new elevated standards should be denied a room. Thank you, Bernard LeDuc. Elevated standards. It is a very nice hotel. But where is everyone? There was a note on the chair over there. Oh, there's someone else. Oh, hey you. Great timing, right? I'm 
thinking if we're lucky, Bernard will let us go home. No point in working in the dark. Sophie? B, you're not scared of the dark, are you? Hey, is everything okay? I found Mr. Cruz. Hector. Oh, you did? What was the bloke up to? You don't understand. I found his body. He's... He's dead. But... Oh, merde. Merde. Sit down, okay? You look like you're about to faint. I don't know what I would do if I saw a dead body. Have you called the police? Yeah, they're... They're on their way. What happened? Was there an accident? No, I don't think so. Someone... did this to him. You mean... Merde. Do you think it could have been Anne and Marcella? No, I... don't think it was them. I don't think... It was them? Cause who just leaves a body like that? What about Paul? He and Hector were caught fighting. Hmm. The cops will want to talk to you. Know what you've seen. You need to be careful about what you tell them. If word of Anne and Marcella's affair gets out, they may put a label on them that will really hurt them. It might not even matter in the end if they did it or not. What are you saying? It's just... Cops like to go after people who are different. People like Anne, like Marcella, like me. You know, I was barely 20 when I was shoved into a police car for just hanging out with people who made me feel like I wasn't so messed up after all. What? Where did that happen? At the White Cat. It's supposed to be a safe space, but it gets raided by cops every now and then. I know Anne was caught at least once, too. Wait, you know her? Yeah, that's how I knew the answer to the riddle. I've never talked to her, but I've seen her a few times. Marcella and her, they're... They're just like me. Thank you. Thank you for trusting me with this. Maybe now you can understand why I care so much about you. I don't know if I'm feeling inspired by Anne and Marcella, or if it's the shock of being so close to an actual murder, but, um... I'd really like for us to be more than just friends, Sophie. Girl, someone just died! Sure. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I... I like that too. Uh, that's... <laughs> That's great. <laughs> the police is here. Oh Just God. Be mindful of what you tell them, okay? Yeah. Yeah, of course. I don't want to lie. I don't want to lie to anyone. I'm going to just try and go in with the truth. I tell the truth, I could get those two ladies in trouble. I don't know what to do. Miss Roy? But I can't lie. Miss Roy. Miss Roy. Oh, sorry. I was distracted. I really need you to focus right now. I don't want to be here all night, and I'm sure you don't either. No. No, I don't. So, as I was saying, we're trying to ascertain the circumstances of Mr. Cruz's death. Can you tell me how you came to find the body? I... I was cleaning room 509 when I heard the elevator bell ring again and again and again. I thought maybe a child was playing with the doors, so I went out in the corridor, and that's when... that's when I saw him. All the blood and... Why was the elevator bell ringing? I'm sorry? You said you heard the elevator bell ring. Why was it ringing? I assume it wasn't a child after all. 
Why would I lie about that? Well, Mr. Cruz's body was preventing the doors from closing. Really? When we found the body, it wasn't that close to the doors. Oh, um, the stairs are blocked because of the renovations, so the elevator's the only way out of the fifth floor. I... I had no choice but to move the body. Just a little. Ah, so that explains the traces we found. Thank you for clearing that up. So... What did you do after that? Well... Um, that's when the power cut. So I had to go to the janitor's closet. To access the fuse box? Exactly. Hmm. I, I changed a few fuses and turned the power back on. But there's a lock on that box, isn't there? Did you have the key? No, I didn't. Only Eugene does. But I thought an ice pick might do the trick, so... I went to the ice machine to get one. Hmm. You're a size 7, I suppose. Um... Yes, I am. Why? How? What did you see when you went to the ice machine? There was... blood. A lot of it. Did you touch anything? I might have touched a few things. Just to figure out what had happened to Mr. Cruz. Of course you did. Why so many witnesses can't help but compromise the evidence is just beyond me. Sorry. <sighs> anyway, what did you do after restoring the power? I took the elevator down to the lobby. That's where I called the police. Do you remember what you said to the operator? The exact words? I... No, I'm afraid I don't. You said there's a man dead He's been murdered. That's possible. What makes you so sure it was murder? It was just an assumption? Should I lie? Oh! I... I just assumed. What with all the... blood. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't believe that, Miss Roy. It's more than an assumption, isn't it? I'm not sure I understand what you mean. I know you like going through your guests' personal belongings. Damn it. We found pictures of you snooping around. Oh. <gasps> oh! Now, I didn't unless you want else. me to arrest you for violating your guests' privacy, I suggest you tell me everything you know. All right. Let's start with the victim's wife, Marcella Cruz. Apparently, she left in quite a hurry this morning. What can you tell me about her? like Marcella is married to Hector it could have been Marcella has a friend that she's meeting at the hotel why does it have to be Marcella has an affair with another woman or I don't know anything about her because I don't want to I don't want to send Sophie to jail so I might have to just expose the affair is that wrong is that not being an ally I don't know what am I doing? What do I do? Why is that the only option? She's having an affair, but it's not what you think. She's been in love with another woman since college. They've been apart for more than than 10 years and now yes yes i know all about mrs cruz and mrs beaumont's sexual deviance deviance have you ever witnessed them engaging in immoral behavior what do you mean i'm asking if you've seen them being you know intimate no i haven't no and did you hear them discuss their deviant ways in front of mrs beaumont's son perhaps imagine what kind of effect such perversion you can have on a young child? No, I didn't hear anything. Did you hear them express their hatred of men? Did they ever talk about using violence against men? Did you hear them speak ill of Mr. Cruz? What are you trying to imply? That Mrs. Cruz killed her husband because she hates men? I've seen it before from lesbians. Oh, this has nothing to do with hate. It's about love. 
Not that you'd understand. Oh, and you think you do? Then please, enlighten me. She's brave enough to be with the one she loves. That doesn't make her a criminal. That doesn't mean she killed her husband. I'm starting to worry you may be one of them, Miss Roy, since you're so eager to defend and these And I demons. worry about your ability to do your job, Detective, since you seem to be such a- ENOUGH! One more word, just one more word, and you'll be spending the rest of your night in a cell. Now get the hell out of here. I've had enough of you. I should have lied. I didn't realize he was, I don't know, anti-gay. Like, what is his problem? Bernard was strangely chipper on the phone. That can't be a good sign. I guess I'll know soon enough. Let's go see what Bernard wants. Okay. The atmosphere is so different in here. It'll probably be a while before the hotel reopens. Ugh, oh, go to hell. Beth. Hey. Are you okay? I'm out of a job. But other than that, yeah, everything's just peachy. What? No, I... I hope you're luckier than I am. Come join me when he's done with you, all right? I'll be... questioning my life choices on the mezzanine. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Ah, Miss Roy. Come in. I suppose you know why you're here? I'm not sure, actually. Your phone call was a bit vague. Yes, well, I prefer to have this conversation in person. We've been getting a lot of press lately, and not the good kind. I wouldn't expect you to understand the position I'm in, but I assure you, it's quite uncomfortable to have one's life's work blown away like that. All thanks to some sexual deviance and a nut job. <laughs> it's obvious to me now that I haven't been firm enough. For guests of such morals to be comfortable booking a few nights here and, and, and committing such a horrid act? <sighs> no, things need to change. This means elevating our standards to the highest possible level, and it starts with the people working here. It starts with you. With me? Yes. From what I've heard, You've been quite the exemplary maid lately. Clean rooms, satisfied guests. They didn't tell I you take about my, my job snooping? very seriously, sir. As you should. We'll see for the future, but for now, you'll be allowed to continue working here. Thank you. I'm not done. The police have finished their investigation and left a mess on the fifth floor. I want you to clean it up. You want me to go back there? Yes. Why not? I found a dead body on that floor. I... I'm not going back. I'll make this simple for you. If you don't do it, you're fired. You can't fire me because I quit. Should I do that? Sure. You can't fire me. Because... Because I quit. <laughs> sure. I fire you, you quit. It's all the same to me. Just make sure to empty your locker before the end of the month. That'll be all. Sexual deviance, my ass. Never disgusting. <sighs> hey. Hey. What a week. <laughs> yeah. So, what did Bernard want with you? Well, he was being kind of a jerk, so I quit. You what? I quit. I figured there was no point in staying if you were leaving. I appreciate the solidarity, but you really didn't have to do that. I think it's for the best. Did Bernard say why he was firing you? Ugh, 
He was going on and on about keeping deviants out of the hotel. So, <laughs> I may have lost my cool a little. A little? I told him I was one of those deviants he was so afraid of. He froze for a moment, then showed me the door. So, what's next for you? I think I'm done working under Bernard's or Linda's. Maybe it's time I become my own Bernard. Minus the fascism, of course. <laughs> I could see myself owning my own establishment. One that caters to the right kind of crowd. Believe it or not, I do enjoy the company of people. Just not, you know, the stuck-up, entitled clientele of this prestigious hotel. But maybe if I were behind the counter of, say, a bar instead of a reception desk. <sighs> I don't know. Is that silly? No, it's not. In fact, you'd be perfect for it. She would You're be. You're the most charming person I know. <laughs> Thank you. As long as you can pay I'm the bills. I'm really glad you're in my life. Me too. Can I kiss you? Hmm. I've been thinking about Anne and Marcella a lot. Should I be jealous? <laughs> no, not in that way. I've been thinking about what they went through. How they had to lie and pretend. Day after day. How they had to live someone else's life for ten years before they could finally be with each other. I... I don't think I could do that. Well, I have good news for you, Bean. Times are changing. It's already started elsewhere. And it will get here, eventually. One day, all the Anne's and Marcella's of the world will live happily together, and no one will give a damn. I really hope that's true. It will be. Oh, I thought we were gonna be able to go back and kiss her. I wanted to, ugh, I wanted one final. No final kiss, oh my God. charged in Clarington Hotel murder case. Oh, God. That's not our fault, because it said that he already knew they were... deviants. So it wasn't like it was going to change their mind. Lindsay Franklin. Oh, yeah. Oh, he died young. Tim. But we don't know who actually murdered him. And then he's back with his dad. Michael's back with his dad. VIP only? This man's disgusting. Is this us? I think this is Sophie. Oh, we had her quit her job. Oh! satisfied with this ending we finished okay we're done like we're done with the game and it was beautiful like it was a really like aesthetically pleasing looking game like the graphics were incredible and everything was just so good um, it was a lot more reading than I would have liked, you know, like a lot of it was just snooping through things, reading lots of letters and things like that. Um, which I guess I should have expected because I did play the demo, which is up on my channel too if you wanted to see like my initial reaction to that. Um, but yeah, 
So I'm wondering if the picture would have been different, like the part where Sophie's sitting there with her taxes and like the overdue notice. I'm wondering if it would have been different if I would have stayed at the job. I left the job, but I'm wondering if like, is my dignity, should I have been going, should I have done that? I did it for my dignity. Like her dignity, I was like, okay, we can't have her work here anymore. But the reality is her mom is sick and she needs a job and I just put her out of a job. So... I don't know, but this was tough. I hated that cop guy. He was terrible. Yeah, it was good and it was short. It was like a short little game. It didn't overstay its welcome. It like told the story and like the puzzles were pretty good. Like were pretty easy. So that's good. I didn't have to Google a single puzzle. I did have to look up where to find the last fuse, but I didn't have to look up like how to do the puzzle. I guess that's all for today. And we finished this game. I don't know what else to say, but uh, thank you guys so much for watching and continuing to watch the series. It means so much to me. Um, and yeah, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.